everyone. This is a video tutorial on the mechanism for the conversion of a ketone to an oxime. So if we take a look at this over here, we're starting with our ketone and with hydroxylamine. And what we're going to see is that our hydroxylamine is going to act like a nucleophile attacking this carbon position here. The reason that carbon is such a good attack point is because it's attached to an electronegative oxygen, which is going to be pulling at the electrons, causing that carbon to become slightly positive. So over here, this one, attracted by that partial positive on the carbon, is going to come and attack that position. Now that carbon would then have too many bonds, so that's going to cause this pi bond to kick up and dump the lone pair electrons onto this oxygen. What we have now formed is a tetrahedral intermediate. So a tetrahedral intermediate means that the carbon is tetrahedral, or sp3 hybridized, and intermediate because it's not going to be staying that way, it's not very stable. When you have a carbon that's sp3 hybridized, it is not very stable when it's attached to more than one electronegative group. It needs to ultimately get back into the sp2 hybrid. So over here, what we're going to see is this oxygen with that negative charge is going to get protonated. So it's going to take the hydrogen off of this nitrogen position and protonate itself. The way you know that this is going to happen is, if you have a tetrahedral intermediate, if you want a group to stay, you're typically going to deprotonate it, and if you want a group to leave, you're going to protonate it. When you protonate groups, you turn them into good leaving groups, which means that they'll be much easier to kick off in the long run. So what we're going to see is this proton transfer occurs, and we have this compound over here, still a tetrahedral intermediate, but all the charges have been removed. Now we're going to be ready to convert back from sp3 over to the sp2 hybrid. So the lone pair on this nitrogen is going to get pushed down in order to form that pi bond. And when these electrons push down, this OH group is going to get kicked off because the carbon can't exceed the octet. So this is what we're going to be left off with. So the final thing we want to do is just make sure that we eliminate as many charges as possible. We don't want to have any charged species left on this compound over here. So what we're going to have is the hydroxide that was kicked off would act as a pretty decent base, so it's going to be able to come and take that H right off of the nitrogen, leaving those electrons on the N. So here we formed our oxime, and then our byproduct would be a water molecule. So that's the mechanism for the conversion of a ketone to an oxime.